Welcome everyone to Women in Aerospace Medicine, our February event. We're very excited to be hosting a member event this month where our two distinguished guests are members of Women in Aerospace Medicine who've come here today to tell us their adventures in space doctoring. Before then, though, I'd like to introduce Women in Aerospace Medicine for all of you who haven't been here before. And I hope that you introduce yourselves in the chat. Uh, this is the board before you. We're joined today, uh, live and in person, uh, Dr. Melissa Jordan from Pensacola, Florida, and Dr. Eleanor Frost, who is in Scotland. The rest of our board members, Laurel Kay, Shipley Gangley, Caitlin McIntosh, uh, and Laura, and, um, and um, uh, Dr. Masterova are all uh, not able to join us today, but they are in here in spirit. And we are all members of a diversity branch of the um, aerospace medicine student and resident organization, an international organization that works with us to create opportunities for leadership, engagement, mutual support, so that uh, female identifying persons all over the world will have the opportunity to engage with the aerospace medicine community and join it to whatever level is appropriate for them. We're here for you, and we hope that you tell us how we can better serve you. Speaking of service, there are a couple of opportunities coming up. There are Catalyst Grants, so the Translational Research Institute for Space Health, which is like the biosciences arm of NASA, and it uh, run out of Baylor University in Texas, United States, has opened their Catalyst Grant programs. They offer two tiers, $150,000 for one year or more for a two-year project. Many people have gotten catalyst grants in order to take their technology further, fly to the ISS, or do suborbital research. So if you're a researcher, please consider applying for catalyst grant. Um, the, the head of the Trish program has been a speaker at Women in Aerospace Medicine and will recognize you if you say you're a member. That's Dorit Denovio. There's a couple of events coming up uh, very shortly from the UNOSA Women in Space sessions uh, on the 8th of March and the 3rd of March. The programming is here and available, but the long and the short of it is it is free. And um, the discussions are about gender equity and spotlighting women and their place in space. So if you're interested, please do join. And last but absolutely not least, um, the UK is looking for delegates to the UN Commission on Women. If you are in the UK, yes, you, you can apply according to the, according to the button, it takes two minutes. Why not you? Why not you? You belong there, you are a part of this already. So if you're, if you're eligible and you'd like to apply, please do. All right, I'm gonna pause and make, see if anybody has any questions. All right, no, shout out to a member, Dr. Carroll serving as a medic in Parimbo Station. I am so excited that one of our members is down being a medic in the Antarctica. That is so great. I'm also so excited to have our two speakers here today. We've had so many amazing speakers from NASA, from Trish, astronauts, people in the public sector, friends of ours. But today we feature two members, Dr. Dora Babuch and Dr. Lydia Johnson Cora Parambil Vargese from currently in Italy and currently in Hungary, respectively. Uh, Dr. Babouche is a general surgery resident and Dr. Johnson Kola Parambel Vargese is an emergency medicine intern. And they're going to be talking to you today about their experiences in the ESA space medicine training program. So I'm going to stop sharing now and I'm going to hand over the floor to our distinguished guests. You have the floor, Dora. Yes, I have it. Um, okay, thank you very much. Let me share our slides first. Uh, is it working? Can you see our slides? We can see them. They're not yet in presenter mode. Not in a presenter mode. So the slideshow mode will blow it up to the full screen. Is it in a presenter mode now? Is it? Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, thank you for inviting us, um, Shana. So my name is uh, Dora Babuc. I'm a general surgery resident um, based in Hungary. Um, also beside my clinical responsibilities, I'm completing my astronomy and planetary science degree and also my third degree in space specialist in life sciences. That's a postgraduate um, 
degree of mine. And I was um, is a space physician training participant. So hello, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, good morning or good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, so first of all, thank you, Sheena, for introducing us and giving us this amazing platform to speak with fellow uh, humans in space and women in space. So thanks a lot. Um, I'm uh, Lydia. I am an emergency medicine and um, intense med in as well, intensive medicine uh, intern in uh, Italy right now. Um, I'm affiliated with um, European Society of Aerospace Medicine, Space Medicine Group since 2018, more or less. So we do lots of research part regarding uh, CPR in space or this kind of activity. And I was along with uh, Dora in, uh, in Cologne doing the amazing ESA space physician training. And we are very much looking forward to explain to you or talk to you about our experience yes this slide okay perfect <laughs> so, um, so just to make um sense of all what we're gonna talk about today right so um, we are setting the bar pretty high by calling our first slide our hilariously professional presentation, but that's willing just to, you know, make sure that later when we are disappointing you or not, uh, you were not, you, you didn't see that coming, the surprise effect. So we're going to talk about basically our um, experience at ESA, right? So this is going to be our agenda for today. So first of all, we'll be giving you a general overview on um, SPTC. And uh, Dora will be uh, talking a bit more about uh, how do you get to do the amazing course and which were the requirements. And we'll have a bit of a chat on what was our expectations on it and what we ended up getting, right? Because that's also something we have to know. And um, unfortunately our slide got a bit messed up, but <laughs> what we are trying to say there is then we'll talk about day one, day two and day three trying to like entertain you with a couple of photos and information and we'll try to also tell you what was new for us and what we learned there more or less and uh, we'll we'll sadly have to talk about one of our major challenges and that was saying goodbye to our fellow colleagues right and uh, we'll get to that too so um i'll give the floor to dora to talk about uh the the requirement about it, if you see, yes. Okay, thank you, Lydia. Oh, okay. Um, so the space visit and training course, um, it's a three day intense medical training that is organized by the European Space Agency. It was based in Cologne, uh, Germany, at the ESA's um, European Astronaut um, Center. Um, yes. Yeah, so for the application, um, there are some there are some uh, requirements for the application. At first, you need to hold a medical degree, so you have to be already a physician in order to. Um, participate in this training and also um, I think they are also um, looking at our previous experiences in aerospace and uh, our previous trainings or degrees if we have um, and also our um, service for the community. Um, do you have anything else in mind Lydia? I think that these are the most important things that they they like to Consider. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think so too. Probably they might also consider your research activity in there. Yeah, but research. I think you have already told all the criteria. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they usually uh, choose 25 positions from all over the world. But there are, I think there are just certain countries that are available to um, send the applications. I'm sure. Uh, I, I'm um, sure. You and countries can uh yes 
So actually, uh, for the uh, SPTC, you can apply also if you're not uh, uh, from a country who is partnered with ESA. So that means like you don't have to necessarily be from Canada and European countries, but you can also be from um, Nigeria or um, yeah. India, Pakistan or wherever you want. So, you know, that's that's pretty nice because like usually, for example, with a medical intern um, positions or a research positions that they might give, um, it, it's strictly um, how can we say opened only for you know members who are partnered from from a partner com the country of, of either so this was pretty open let's say it so if, if you are really interested in it please please apply because it's a very valuable experience so you know it doesn't matter where you're from just apply and you won't regret it yeah sorry dora go, hey, go ahead <laughs> okay Uh, so we wanted to share some pictures about how the European Astronaut Center look like. Yeah, so my first um, my first thought when I just saw this building, yeah, like it's huge. <laughs> it looks quite huge. And uh, when you enter, I really love the design of the hall. It was just full of um, pictures and we also had some... Um, like, uh, I, th I think that small settlement about rockets and space spaceships that I think it will be visible on the next um, slide. Yeah, so this is me and Lydia, like I'm standing in a hall and um, yeah, these are that <laughs> settlements that I um, talked about previously. And uh, Lydia, she is standing in right in front <laughs> Uh, the building. <laughs> yeah, I was like a kid in a candy store. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Dora, you you like I remember you telling us about uh, like when you came to ARC, you were telling us how tough was it for to reach it, right? Because it was it was huge as a complex. Because I don't know if you guys have ever been to. Um, the European Astronaut Center or DLR in uh, in Germany in Cologne, and it is it it is massive. It's huge because you get in, and if you have never been there before, you get just lost. So, um, Dora, you remember? I remember you telling us about that and how, how hilarious that was. And she was like coming in and be like, "Oh my God, I barely made it because it was so huge." So, that's, that's something you have to be aware of when you go there. <laughs> Yeah, it was a bit challenging for me to find uh, the location itself of the building because actually that that center is placed in a you, we can say that in a in a center of these research buildings like there are there are many there placed many there so I, um I think even even um, even in the security they gave me a map to uh, where can I find the European Astronaut Center. So that's how huge is that place. <laughs> so yeah, it was a little bit challenging on the first day, but after that, everything went smoothly. <laughs> yeah, I also got lost the first three times I went there. So like, you know, I get you. <laughs> yeah, so Dora, you were telling me, um, like, you know, you were like, we, we connected earlier before this, um, we, we met uh, at least uh, via internet before through LinkedIn, right? And um, what what were your expectations when 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 you apply to the course and when you go to accept it? Like, what were you thinking? For me, at first, I just heard that um, that yeah, like so many of my friends has already participated in this uh, training in the previous years, and I just heard that from everyone. It's really an amazing experience. You can learn a lot. You can see so many things if you if you are there in um, in person because unfortunately if i'm if i'm correct last year and uh, probably the year before last year was also online so we were be i think we are very lucky because we could be there in person and we can go around in the center we can see where they are performing the training for the astronauts so 
Yeah, I feel very lucky. And how about you? What were your ex uh, expectations? Oh, so, oof. so it, it was nice to ask you the question, right? I was not expecting to get it back. <laughs> So uh, basically, I I didn't want to apply for the course uh, in first place. Uh, my mentor almost obliged me to do it. Um, when I finished um, at um, in Paris with Ecom, right? He sent me a message saying, "Hey, you should absolutely apply for the course." And I was like, "No, I'm underperformed." Like you know, the imposter syndrome. That was the first thing I I, I experienced. And then I was like, "Okay, I'll, I'll send it in. I know they won't accept me." And then they accepted and I was like totally overwhelmed. I was like, oh my God, I was not expecting it. I am an imposter. So that was the first thing that I experienced. And later I was so much looking forward to it because as you said, lots of our colleagues and friends from Space Medicine already did it. And everybody had a very high opinion on the experience itself. So to be honest, I was counting the days. The day before it started, I was like so excited that I could, I could barely sleep, right? Other than meeting friends and drinking the day before, that might have also contributed. <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that was more or less also my expectation, yes. And it was also nice to see you in person, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, we have a question here. Does, it, does, the cost, does the course cost anything? Do they put you up for the three days? Yeah, so for... Um, we, did, we didn't have any fees for the training itself, but uh, we had to manage the cost of the accommodation and also the, um, and also the, for me, the cost of the airplane tickets. Yeah, so this was the first day, right? So um, the day one was a day of expectations because you go in and you don't know anybody, you don't know anything, you don't know what to expect. Even if, to be honest with you, they were very, very thorough and cliche German in their organization because we knew exactly every hour how it was planned. So uh, that was amazing. And um, in our opinion, me and Dora spoke about it earlier, which were our favorite keynote speaks, right? And it was by uh, Zege and Dr. David Green. Um, and they were talking about uh, clinical space medicine lecture and space environment lecture, respectively. And as you can see here, we put a photo from uh, the astronaut Luca Parmisano and the long and short term physiological alteration. Um, I would go through it because I think we have all seen the slides and variants of the slides through all of our career. So um, probably the thing that was not new, but they put some focus on was sounds, right? The ophthalmological alteration that um, lots of publications and research is concentrated on right now. As a matter of fact, um, later Dora will show you a slide of um the group being in front of the centrifuge in dlr and in dlr lots of people and researchers and colleagues and friends of us are um experimenting on sounds and bed rest and it's it's it's, it's pretty interesting and we spoke a lot about space environment and lots of funny photos so i i think what was really amazing about this lecture where there we didn't get bored not even for a minute even if like you know you you didn't actually know if you'll get bored, if the conversation, the, the lectures will be redundant because we all have some space medicine expertise, right? But like also, even if it was a refresher for many lectures, they did it so nicely and so lightheartedly, but still keeping it professional uh, that like it, it was so nice. And uh, we felt like we went back home feeling like, you know, okay, today it was nice. Today we got to, um, learn something different and uh, we spoke a lot about uh, pre-flight during the flight and post-flight uh, role of a surgeon of a flight surgeon and uh, we will also speak about later um, in the slide what a flight surgeon career might look like if anybody wants to pr proceed that career 
And uh, I think the core day one was also to talk about a bit um, the role of Ada. Like I think after the first day, the thing that remained the most with me was to understand better Ada, the politics of Ada, or the lack of politics of Ada, and um, the, the 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 topic, the core of like you know. Um, understanding how important partnership is in space so probably uh, ESA is one of those um, agencies I, I don't I'm not here to like you know public give publicity to ESA but just saying what we what we learned there uh, it was to mainly tell us what brings us further in space exploration is friendship quote unquote said in layman's words because like if we need something we can talk to Doxa. And for example, Ada spoke about a lot, the, the Dr. Green, for example, spoke a lot about um, the importance also of having um, like in you know, a relationship with other uh, agencies, which are not mainly in the field of, for example, Western media or Western thoughts. So that was, that was very interesting for us and very eye-opening. Yeah, that was my, more or less the day one. Do you have something to, um, add uh dora i don't i don't know i'm i missing something so i think the only thing that i want to add is that um, um i think it was also very very exciting to hear about that i think most of us was or most of us were already familiar with space physiology or pathophysiology or the adaptations, but I just had a feeling like they, they put it into a whole new context. Then there were so many things that I have already learned about or I have already uh, read about, but I had a feeling like, oh, okay, now I understand it completely. So that was the moment when I could completely understand how is it works, why is it happen, why is it a risk during uh, space flight. So, yeah, I think it was it was very very useful for me too. <laughs> yeah. So I think we can move to the next slide. Oh. <laughs> So uh, we put this slide over here because we have some fun backstory. Um, the, the, the nicest part about, uh, I, I told you, was, was the, the major challenge that we had during the entire course was to say goodbye to our colleagues and friends, right? Because like we met so many new people, but we know that space medicine is pretty small. Like, you know, it, it's not that we have so many people that, Whichever conferences you know you go to, you know each other somehow. So it was the same at, at the SBTC. We we knew each other more or less. Who uh, like some of us were already friends. Some of us knew each other via LinkedIn, like Dora, and uh, became friends later. Or new people who you get friends with well, very well, right? So there was this guy. Uh, by the way, I want to just for a disclaimer. I have total permission from his side to talk about the story because it's it's pretty funny. Um, at least from my perspective, because but my bar of being funny is very low, so probably you find it very boring. So excuse about that in advance. Um, so we were having this coffee break at the cafeteria, and uh, there was this guy coming in, and uh, we were talking with him, and uh, he was super nice, and um, we were there talking and, and asking each other where you come from. So the introductory part that everybody does, basically. And he was like, oh, I'm from Sweden. And I was like, oh, cool, nice. And I started like flooding him with names of our colleagues in space medicine there. And he was like, oh, do you know him? And he was like, no, do you know him? And I was like, no, I was like, oh, right, perfect. But like a flooding, which like made sense because most of the time when I, I we meet people from, for example, France, and we are speaking about CNS, people know each other because it's small. So it makes sense contextually. I was not like, you know, I was like, no, I don't know him. At, at some point I was like, okay, uh, wh what, do, what do you do? Wh where, like, you know, in which specialty are you in? Why are you here? I was like, um, I'm not a doctor. I was like, oh, you're not a doctor. Cool. And uh, what, what, do, what do you do? And he was like, oh, I'm a 
the jet pilot guy and I was like why didn't you ask uh, why did you do the astronaut selection you might have had a chance and he was like yes I'm an astronaut and that was so funny because like I thought I met him somewhere as a matter of fact I kept on asking him do we meet at this conference that conference just because as every each of us I saw his photo online and it remained in my brain and somehow my brain decided to think he was a friend of mine <laughs> so um that's something that happened um but he was super nice and as a matter of fact there were three other astronauts uh, who were with us following the course uh, there was uh, i'm so terrible with names and surnames uh, there was uh, carmen who is uh, the, the the she's a doctor from austria uh, is the astronaut with uh, the glass and the blown astronaut here on you can't see my cursor i would say on the um, she's on the right the second one from up uh, and there was uh, her, where the cursor is, uh, the, uh, she is uh, Sarah, and uh, there was Marcus. I, unfortunately, we were all, or luckily, we were all giving first names to each other. So I don't remember their surnames, but they were amazing. And we could speak about their experiences in, for example, Carmen did an amazing experience in Concordia as, an, as a physician. And she spoke about it, how that helped us, helped her getting into the astronaut class of 2022. Um, that's also something if you are interested in, you should totally evaluate to do because that sounded very, very interesting. Yes. So, Dora, to you the stage again. Sorry, I, I chat a lot. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, for me, I also had some amazing experience with um, some of our astronauts. I also had a lunch together with uh, Sarah and uh, Carmen, and um, they were, yeah, we were chatting a lot like you know it was it was pretty cool because like it was like so casual like oh what are you doing I'm doing cancer research what are you doing oh yeah I did uh, one year um isolation in you know Antarctica what are you doing Dora oh I'm doing space surgery like and but here yeah it, it was it was so cool it was like so yeah like so casual like when you are just talking to your friends but Meanwhile, it just happened. I I was talking to the ESA astronaut. So, yeah, that was that was <laughs> one of the coolest experience that I I had during this uh, training. Uh, would you like to say something else about this topic, can, or can we move? Can? Yeah, we can move forward. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we also met Samantha. <laughs> Because on the first um, on the first day, I think it was in the first day still, um, we had a session, a question and answer session with uh, Samantha, and um, at, that was yeah, that was also very very amazing to just ask directly like, hey Samantha, how did you feel when you were in space, or what did you do there, or, or how was the um, you know, like the psychological factors. Did you miss your family, or how did you like survive, or what were the hardships? So, um, I think that experience was very unique because, um, uh, yeah, you know, like you just cannot have that experience like every day to just just talk to Samantha and ask her to, hey, how how are you? What how was space? <laughs> what do you think, Lydia? Yeah, absolutely. Also because like she is Italian, right? So I have a particular yeah. attachment to her. Um, as uh, for example, when I got into a space field, it was more or less uh, my first contact was with Samantha uh, Cristoforetti when she was like in um, in her first mission, and we had an in-flight call, and that was very nice. So um, every time I meet her in person, it's it, it's so. Um, it's so nice because she has a charisma, right? Because whenever she says something and talks with the public, she's able to convey the passion towards the space. And uh, for example, here we put the photo of the cupola because uh, as every astronaut, also Tomar and um, Luca Parmitano or others uh, say that's their favorite spot because you can see um, see space from there. And as a matter of fact, coming back to space medicine clinical part, uh, most of the astronauts referred that that's where they have the most acrophobia ever because you can lose perception of space where you are in right so they sometimes feel like falling in that was something that we learned and we felt like wow that's cool because we don't think about it 
but as everything else is closed, when they're there, they feel like other than they can get adjusted to it again very, very quickly. But um, that's a place where they feel like, oh my god, I'm I'm, I'm falling, kind of thing. But yeah, I, it was it was very it was very nice. And later we also met her. I think it was with you, Dora, right? When we went to have a coffee, and she was cleaning the the cups and everything. And that was also funny to see because like you have always seen these people a bit away from us, right? Even if it's it's like sometimes you see celebrities and you're like, okay, these people are outside of the world. They do they don't do their own dishes kind of thing. That was also funny to see and talk about normal things. And yeah, that was also very inspiring. And uh, we could ask also from medical perspective lots of questions, which was very, very nice about confinement or isolation or so many things that uh, we could get a feedback upon and understand, okay, we, we do the clinical part from space medicine perspective or research path. Okay, that's how it impacts a human for real who is on ISS. So yeah, that was pretty nice. Yeah. I was <laughs> so surprised because how I, you know, like how I expect, um, you know, to, uh, for an astronaut to be like, they, I was, you know, like expecting for an astronaut to be like very strict and like, but very like narrow, I can say, but she was like, she had like a pretty cool and a very friendly personality, or at least that was my first expression of her. So that was definitely an amazing experience again. <laughs> Oh yeah, day two with the space bananas. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You can you can explain this slide better than me. Yeah, so on the second day, we we still ha we had uh, some very very funny lectures and about that banana that we just put here. Probably you will just <laughs> you will just ask go. Oh, what is this uh, banana is doing here floating in space? But <laughs> uh, we have a very funny story about that. Um, that yeah, that slide. <laughs> Would you like to talk about that slide, Lydia? <laughs> yeah, so like it, it was the end of, um, so that, that's also the day when we wanted, we had this whole show dinner. And um, that was, this was the last presentation that we had. By the way, just for a disclaimer, we wanted to say that all the copyright for the slides are, uh, you know, by Ava. So we, we took some slides and uh, photos with from internet available to everybody. We put, we put it on, so just small disclaimer. But yes, we, we had this amazing dinner planned and it was around 6, 6.30, right? Or I don't know if it was 6 or 6.30. And the last uh, presentation was on radiation and we were like, oh my God, I don't want to listen to it anymore because I just want to go on dinner, right? And then we got this amazing presentation because uh, the, the keynote speaker started talking about um, bananas. And of course you can imagine if somebody says, say banana, you start laughing or not understanding what's happening because you're talking about radiation in space and it's not, that much of a fun topic if you don't like it. So as you can see, um, radiation is measured in bananas. Uh, and she showed us this amazing slide where you're like, how many bananas do you need if you have to, there was one about sleeping together that's not here, but um, a banana itself has 0 0.1 microzep. So the radiation with a heart, of course, uh, has 10 of banana. So banana is a unit, so on. So flying to New York, to, from New York to LA is 400 times banana. So that, that was very hilarious for us, probably was because we were very tired. So our level of uh, like, you know, we were very uh, disinhibited and uh, tired. So we found it super funny, but uh, yes, that's why there was a banana floating there or uh, things like that. So. It, it was pretty nice and um, probably in this, oh no, Dora did put another slide before, which I last minute replaced, I think, I'm sorry. There was the one with uh, the, the, the sleeping with a person is like five bananas. So like, you know, not sleeping 
in the act of but like you know being in bed with someone is two uh, two or five bananas something like that so that that's why the banana is there in the fly so as we were telling in the beginning they try their maximum to make it enjoyable in every way possible uh during their presentation yes um, and on the same day, we had also the Eurocom workshop, right? No, we went to the Eurocom and we had a workshop too. Which group were you in, Dora, for the workshop? And probably tell us also a bit more about the workshop because probably like, you know, we, we, we missed how to, yeah. So for the workshop, I think I was um, in the, I think it was group A or group one. Yeah, group A, yeah. So we, we had to solve the problems of uh, orthostatic intolerance on lunar missions. Yeah, so we had a very exciting dis discussion. Everyone was so passionate about the topic. Everyone wanted to share their opinion and uh, their, um, their knowledge about uh, how to solve this problem from different perspectives, like from engineering, from medical perspectives, from yeah, like um, from other perspectives. So it was a very, very uh, valuable experience. I have to say that because then we could just um, synthesize our knowledge. We can just add and make it as a more complex solution for the problem. Yeah, how about you, Lydia? Uh, we were in the sleep group, meaning that like, uh, first of all, this was a workshop that was made by Isa, because these are three main questions. I don't remember the other group workshop, to be honest, that they are currently working upon and wanted us to find solutions. So for example, from Dora's group, there was somebody who was telling, yeah, we need the copyright on our idea because they actually came up with an amazing poster. That was like, also, I think there was a photo of Dora uh, holding the poster and explaining about this amazing suit that they designed. Uh, my group was about um, how to make sure that, uh, how to contrast the um, insomnia in space on lunar gateway. So this was in the context of lunar gateway and lunar emissions and um, to understand how we can prevent this. And our group was also very passionate. Uh, probably, I, I can't emphasize it enough, but it was an amazing group. Like the entire SPTC group was amazing. So um, we have a very good dynamics, uh, lots of jokes and lots of uh, interesting insights. Lots of like, you know, with some colleagues you start talking about the current research you're working on that they would be giving you very valuable feedbacks and everything. And in this case on our on our workshop, we literally had only 20 minutes, but we had to take 40 minutes to speak about and finish. And we were doing the DLR visit. And also there we were still talking upon our thing because we were all getting aggressive or in a nice way, of course and passionate about it. So that was also pretty nice. And I don't know if we can actually speak about our results that we came to, probably not, but uh, that was very nice. And um, they were taking pictures of the results that we presented, especially Dora's team was really good at writing them down on a really nice cardboard and everything. Um, that was a really nice workshop. Yeah, so that was one thing. And then we went to DLR and uh, probably Dora, you can tell a bit, a bit more about the NB Hub, what that is, and uh, the centrifuge. And this is your group too, right? So, uh, yeah. It was my group. Yeah, so we visited the, um, this uh, centrifuge uh, laboratory. And um, yeah, that whole thing. So you can see here that um, that small black um, um, place for the astronauts that they can lie down there actually and they can do some exercising like squats or like okay not squats but there is that machine when you can just doing that uh, um, yeah like imitating like squats and um, when they were using the centrifuge then because of the gravity it's because of the increased gravitational forces it will be so much more difficult for the astronaut to to perform these um, activities that is required um, them for for perform, and meanwhile they can uh, monitorize them and um, still keep in touch with them and uh, even talk to them. So yeah, it's also a part of the astronaut training. 
So that was very interesting to see this, yeah, that whole thing in person. Uh, that was that was so much more huge <laughs> than, it, than it actually looks like on the picture. <laughs> Everyone was so interested. We took a lot of pictures there. Yeah, and uh, as a matter of fact, you can probably see uh, somebody from King's College because probably we uh, forgot to mention it. Um, yeah. yeah, so that was something. Uh, Shane is telling us to wrap in the next five minutes, so probably we have to go a bit further. We are too chatty, so yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is our Eurocom. You can skip it. Um, yes, let, let's let's try to like you know make it faster to get into the third day. Otherwise, we'll never make it. <laughs> Yes. You want to go to the next slide? Okay. You can skip this. Uh, we just had a we just had a dinner together with um all of the all of the guys from the um training and also the organizers were there and some of the speakers were there and we just had a very, very nice dinner. Um at this restaurant, I'm so sorry, I cannot pronounce it, this name, but probably it is. <laughs> so, yeah, so, <laughs> so we could try um, German food here and hang, like hang out and a little bit um, get to know each other more. So that was also a very, very nice experience. Yeah, so day three. Um, on day three, we could um, we could visit um, some other facilities and some other um, places where we could see the training. And uh, we had the workshop presentation that we already, um, I think we already um, told everything about the presentation and the topics and, uh, and our thoughts about that thing. Um, yes, so. Uh, Lydia, would you like to um, tell us about <laughs> where did you? Yeah. So it was in the Columbus model, right? Because uh, this is in in the uh, SPTC um, um, train. No, sorry, at the AR uh, astronaut. Um, how can I say training session? They have a training facility, and it was inside. And this is the model ISIS uh, Columbus module. And I was in and having fun uh, before the course, like, you know, in, in doing one of the course days, and it was so much fun. And as you can see from my face, I was like super happy, like a kid in a candy store. So uh, that was an amazing experience also because like, I don't think in my lifetime I will ever be on, on the ISS. So that was a mocha, that was pretty cool. Yes, and um, we also go to see all the, uh, the pool, how they call it, uh, where they, do lots of experiments and you know train the astronauts that was really good and um do you want to go to the next slide because i'm a bit worried that we are staying uh we don't have enough time for everything so yeah, um if you go to the next if you go to the next slide uh yes that's actually uh dora's slide because she stayed in right uh for the tourist part yeah, I asked, uh, yeah, after completed this um, training, um, I had one extra day in Cologne to just look around, take some drinks, <laughs> um, try some good food there. So that was also very interesting for me because that was my very first time in Cologne. So yeah, I could really enjoy that day too. Yes, so this is our whole group with all the organizers and participants, and uh, I think some of the speakers are also on this slide, and we and um, the astronauts also. So, yeah, to be honest, I, I didn't really expect it that I will be, um, we will have such a good group like that. Like, I made so many new friends, everyone was so nice and friendly. And um, and uh, I just hope we will meet soon again. Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, that was a major challenge, right? Saying bye to everybody. And from this photo, it's like find Valdo, 
because um, <laughs> it's like, I don't know, Dora, if you know the game, it's like finding where you are and I found you, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's always fun to see the group photos. But this, this was our uh, class of 2023 and it was really beautiful and amazing people from all over the world. And um, yeah, so we decided to go with something similar to Spider-Man, right? With uh, great powers come great responsibility. So with exceptional companionship, comes extraordinary experiences so that was a case so we decided to go with that as a title and um i think we are actually done with our presentation aren't we Dora? i think we want to speak about so many more things but uh time is uh, like not much and um we are so grateful for this amazing platform that you guys gave us to talk about our experience thanks a lot and if you have any questions we are here and uh, thank you, Dora, for being an amazing companion for this experience. Thank you for joining me. That was very, very fun to um, prepare together for this uh, presentation and uh, also discussing the slides and our plan. So thank you. And also thank you, thank you. for them to having us and giving this opportunity for us to um, tell about our experiences and inspiring the next generation. And I want to just encourage everyone who is considering to apply for this course for the next year, just please try it. <laughs> Thank you both so very much. Let's uh, go back to leaving the screen open so people can turn on their cameras if you wish. Recording will stop. Thank you both for our time and let's go on to the Q&A. You can chat more there if people don't have any burning questions, but I know we have a few. So see you in a moment. <laughs>